On today's show, we are finally back. I am sorry. Today's episode, we are breaking down a couple of little news nuggets uh, from the Padres and answering a whole bunch of questions and comments over the past few weeks when I've been absent because I was super duper sick, among other things. So everybody, hopefully you're still there. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Padres, your daily San Diego Padres podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Locked On Padres podcast, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for Tuesday, November 5th. As always, I'm your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. You can follow me on Twitter at Javipeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or if you want only Padres updates you can check out at LO underscore Padres. Also, if you want to check out my other work, you can go check out JustBaseball.com where I help, help out writing their newsletter, which is going to be very helpful for all you guys if you want to keep up with, uh, you know, kind of just the general baseball and all the offseason stuff and all the winter meetings and free agency and trades and all that. Uh, and I also do regular writing for them, too. And I also host another podcast called Baseball Versus the World, which I'm trying to ramp back up and hopefully going to have that back next week. But it's basically evergreen, silly baseball topics. Ladies and gentlemen, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. And to get started with today's show, I just want to start off with an apology. I was egregiously, heinously, cataclysmically, calamitously sick over the last couple of weeks. It was really weird. And frankly, I don't know what's going on because I've been getting sick a lot um, to start this end of the year. That's a weird way to put it. But basically since like July, August, uh, like I've been getting sick a lot. And specifically August, like I lost my voice. Listeners of the show, you might remember, I, I literally was tweeting about it. I was so frustrated. And this time was also frustrating. Uh, on top of just being woozy, I was sneezing all over the place, coughing all over the place. I could just not record. And it was really frustrating. And I want to apologize for that uh, sincerely, because I know that you guys, you know, really want daily podcast stuff. And speaking of, you know, some people who were uh, very upset from at Jay, uh, I know a guy on YouTube. He said, can we get someone to do a daily podcast on the Padres like most other teams do? I'm sorry, but the current guy sucks. And I totally understand why you feel that way. I personally feel that way regardless of if I'm doing the podcast every day. But in general, I really feel like I let you guys down. So I just want to apologize about that. Um, and I want to start off the podcast by saying we're going to be back every day. Going forward, we've got a lot of fun ideas. We're going to crossovers with other hosts. So I'm locked on Diamondbacks, Miller Thomas, my old buddy. We're going to be doing uh, like a little bit of a fun episode, just talking about the best moments of this Padre season. I might even split that up into two because there were so many good moments this year that it's actually really hard uh, to decide which were the best ones. Um, going to be doing free agent profiles of everybody from Anthony Santander to... I think is Max Scherzer a free agent to him, to Corbin Burns, to trade possibilities, to your international free agents like Roki Sasaki. There's all sorts of things that we're going to be doing. And of course, we will continue the player review series that I started last week uh, with Xander Bogarts. I believe the next one we're going to do is Fernando Tatis Jr. Because he is, after all, my bobblehead right here. So why not? So just want to just get that out of the way. And today's just going to be a fun little kind of catch-up episode, uh, answering a couple of your guys' questions that I think breach a lot of topics, and then just some responding to some comments that I thought were either funny, insightful, or really stupid, and I want to make fun of them. So all sorts of stuff, guys. Firstly, though, I want to talk about just some some news. Um, Jerickson Profar and Hassan Kim, both are big like free agents. We're going to be talking about them later on in the episode as well. Kim declining his player option. Uh, I, think it was his, I think it was a player option, right? Um, so he'll be a free agent. Um, you know, Fangraphs has put out um, their predictions for like the the cost potentially of all the free agents. Hassan Kim was like three years or four years, like fifty million around that kind of range. Uh, it, it's going to be really interesting to see how that goes. And I will say that I really missed him in the postseason. There's something about that guy. Every year with the Padres, his numbers in high leverage situations with runners in scoring position have been really steady and really good. He does not get significantly worse in those situations. So would he have been a difference maker in the playoffs? Potentially. I don't know for sure. Um, but the other piece of news was uh, 
Uh, the Padres had a little bit of a scandal recently. Reading from The Athletic, MLB finds Dominican prospect with now withdrawn Padres agreement falsified his age. Reading from The Athletic by Dennis Lynn, an investigation by Major League Baseball found that a prominent teenage prospect in the Dominican Republic falsified documents and is five years older than he previously believed, resulting in the withdrawal of a verbal agreement with the San Diego Padres, a league source confirmed to The Athletic. The prospect, who went by the name of Cesar Alta. Alta Gracia, Caesar Altagracia, and plays shortstop, had verbally agreed to sign with the Padres for about $4 million in January 2027, according to ESPN, which first reported the news of the MLB investigation. The source said the league found that Alta Garcia is 19, not 14, as his paperwork had stated. The Padres and MLB separately declined to comment. Um, look, it's... Um, first of all, I, I just want to say one quick thing. I think that everybody should be careful not to throw out like stereotypes and just assume that like every Dominican player or every international player is lying about their age. I think that's really dangerous and frankly, uh, just in insulting in a lot of ways. So let's be careful about doing that. Um, I know that there's some people, um, who like to joke and whatnot about this stuff. I know that there's been like in baseball circles, people think Albert Pujols lied about his age, and that's why he fell off so dramatically. Uh, to those people, I would say, bro, he ain't the first player to fall off <laughs> out of nowhere at age 30. Go look up Evan Longoria's numbers. That dude was like 28, and then he just fell off after looking like a Hall of Famer. So it happens all the time. But um, yeah, just uh, really unfortunate situation. Someone asked me, um, I, I don't know if I have their name on me right now, but they asked me, like, is, is Preller going to get in trouble for this? And no, I don't, I don't think so. Preller got in trouble back in the day for... Uh, withholding, I believe, some information on an injury. I believe that was the Johnny Cueto, like, three-team trade or whatever. That was weird. It was between them, the Marlins, and I think the Reds eventually. Uh, that was just a whole weird situation, and Preller was suspended for that. But no, I don't I don't see that kind of unfolding with this situation. I just think that it's completely different, um, and I, I, don't, I don't see it. So it's just one of those, like, weird, weird stories and kind of unfortunate stories, really. Like, you just hate to see stuff like that, and it's it's unfortunate, but it, it can happen, and it does happen. Um, a decent amount to the point where we we do bring it up like every few years an incident like this kind of popping up um i also want to give a shout out i was so sick i literally have not done a podcast i just realized this now since the dodgers won the world series so congratulations to the dodgers got a lot of comments from dodgers fans over the past few weeks on this year channel um so we'll see um you know, like we'll see, I guess, like uh, what they had to say about me. Sorry, I got distracted by a text message. But, you know, it's it, it was a, in my opinion, a really crummy series. And sh in speaking of which, I think Dave Roberts might have felt the same in which the other day when speaking with Mookie Benson in an interview said that the NLDS series against the Padres felt like it was their actual World Series. First of all, crazy disrespectful to the Yankees. Deservedly so. The Yankees completely uh, did, did just complete no shows, uh, mistakes from their management, right? Mike Schilt would never, uh, throwing in a pitcher in the first game in extra innings who hadn't pitched in over a month to face two Hall of Fame hitters and Shohei Otani and Freddie Freeman ends exactly how you would expect. Shouts to Freddie Freeman. He is a very good player and I'm happy for, you know, he's got a really nice story with his son and all that stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, so I'm happy for him. World Series MVP, very deserved. So you have that mistake by Aaron Boone of the Yankees and then they just, they just got beat. I'm not trying to say that the Dodgers got lucky. Let me be very clear. I'm not saying that. Um, and then you have in game, what was it, game five, uh, the Yankees are down 3-1, but they still managed to choke. You know what I mean? And then they had the, the three-error uh, fifth inning to blow the lead. They might have sent the series back to L.A. I still think the Dodgers win hands down, but it's just impressive. Like, when you're down 3-1, it's kind of hard to find yourself, like, having a meltdown. That's pretty impressive when you do that, and that's what the Yankees did. Um, and I'm really interested, obviously, to see what happens with Juan Soto, and that will be a question throughout the whole offseason. I do not think he is necessarily an option for the Padres. Um, I think instead they're going to kind of uh, prioritize some pitching help, I think, um, and maybe a couple of bats here and there, but not necessarily the big ones. Um, but either way, it's going to be a very interesting free agency. In terms of just names, I mean, Paul Goldschmidt's a free agent. Like, I know he's not as good anymore, but it's just going to be interesting to kind of follow this whole thing. So... Very excited to talk about it. And you keep it here, Locked On Locked On Padres, to keep yourself updated, folks. But with that being said, everybody, we got to take just a quick break to talk about one of our sponsors before we get into the mailbag segment. And the first one is a very serious one. Guys, sometimes intimate moments happen 
spontaneously. And we always want to be ready so we can perform in the bedroom, the bedroom, the bedroom. Hims provides access to treatments that can help you stay hard and last longer, giving you that boost of confidence so you can be ready whenever the mood strikes. Your sex life is important, but your schedule is busy. You might not have time to go to a doctor's office to get tristic tested for ED. Through Hims. you can get a personalized ED treatment without stepping foot outside your door. It provides access, Hims. H-I-M-S, provides access to a range of doctor-trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis and their generics up to 95% cheaper. The process is 100% online, so there's no need for uncomfortable doctor's visits as well. Just answer a series of questions on their site and a medical provider will determine the right treatment option. If prescribed, your medication ships directly to you in discreet packaging for free. No insurance is needed and one low price covers everything from treatments to ongoing care with thousands of trusted subscribers. Hims can help help you find the option that works for you. Start your free online visit today at hims, H-I-M-S dot com slash locked on. Hims, H-I-M-S slash locked on for your personalized ED treatment options. Go check it out, guys. The products mentions are chewable compounded products, which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions requiring an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if who will determine if appropriate restrictions do apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Remember, guys, hims.com slash locked on. And just like that, everybody, we are back in segment number two of this here Locked On Padres Return to Glory episode extravaganza. Let's get into some of your guys' YouTube comments and Twitter questions, et cetera, et cetera. Let us begin. First, let's talk about some of the comments that were mean, that were just talking. A lot of y'all were talking crazy nonsense, and that's to be expected. The Dodger fan base, at least online, um, you know, the, the same one that claims that it's not a rivalry and that they don't care about the Padres. Usually whenever I do a, a episode or a, a post, whatever, uh, discussing anything to do with the Dodgers, whether it be a, just a regular season preview, whether it be reactions, whatever, they usually flood my comments, of course, only after wins. And unfortunately, that tends to happen a lot. Uh, so in this case, that was no different. Uh, one of my last episodes, not my latest episode. It wasn't that long I was gone, guys. But uh, at TML365, TML7 said, Padres didn't even make the postseason in 2023, despite having the third highest payroll of $256 million, only behind Mets and Yankees. Shouldn't use payroll as an excuse. So I don't think I was using payroll as an excuse for, for, for me. If I did, then that's just what happens when I record too many episodes of this podcast and I misspoke. Um, no, I'm not blaming payroll for why the Dodgers win. Now I do know what, but what, what now this is where I think the comment was getting confused. I do think that it is patently absurd to call the Dodgers underdogs and some sort of Cinderella story and that they're, you know, you're putting the money ball music over Freddie Freeman hitting home runs. I do think that's absurd. This team spent one over a over billion dollars of free agency. They are not underdogs in the slightest. And by the way, I did not believe that the Padres were underdogs. I thought it was just a, a series where it was like two great teams. Kind of as simple as that. You know what I mean? I, I really do believe that. I, that's how I kind of approached it. So my video talking about the Dodgers and what I was annoyed about them was less to do with them spending, less to do with them winning, but more about the fan base, how they reacted. Speaking of which, I forgot to mention the World Series. We had a controversy with a Yankees fan trying to rip the ball from Mookie Betts' glove, which was extraordinarily dangerous and was awful, but was part of me, not with Mookie Betts, let me be very clear, I don't want anything to happen that was very dangerous, could have broke the guy's hand or something like that, very awful, and it was incredibly irresponsible by the media, um, whether it be Barstool Sports, whether it be Jesse Agler, whoever it is from ESPN, uh, kind of doing profiles and doing interviews with this guy, that's incredibly dangerous and kind of speaks to the sports media economy that we have right now, and dare I say just economy of clap chasers in general right now, but um, not to get into a too long-winded rant, but part of me was also like, yeah, Dodgers fans, remember when you threw beer at Fernando Tatis Jr. and threw stuff at Jerks and Profar, and you were like, well, they talk snack? So I'm just, I just want to throw that out there for a little bit of hypocrisy from the online Dodgers fans, but uh, no, that was my big issue. I do not like, and by the way, I have seen um, Padres fans talking um, at least online, mocking the the Dodgers, like all it took for us to not choke is spending, you know, $1.6 billion in free agency. And I'm like, 
yeah, but like you should be upset about the rest of teams in Major League Baseball that spend nothing and actively do not try or care about winning a championship because you do need money in order to win a championship. So that's what I'd be more upset with. Um, Next comment. This one is a little bit mean. From at Subaru, I believe this is another uh, Dodgers fan as usual. What a sore loser way. The Padres bring in Tatis, Machado, Soto, C, Snell, and still cry that the Dodgers bring in all the big names and that they're boring. Are you seriously still crying small market tears? Come on. The Dodgers just outplayed your cocky, immature, selfish players and outsmarted by management. For believing in the law of averages, you would think you would believe in karma. Maybe next time, don't celebrate your players being D-bags. By the way, the media was choosing the Padres. It's one thing to bring in stars. It's totally different to bring in the right ones, blah, 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 blah. Uh, once again, that is not what I was complaining about. Uh, I was not complaining about that. I was annoyed. Now, I am annoyed uh, at to, to some degree at the Dodgers bringing in stars because I'm, I'm annoyed at other teams. I think Shohei Otani's free agency, this is just in my opinion, total, a lot of feeling based, but I think that the way that process went, it's very clear that if the, the Angels were at least halfway competent, that he might have stayed. So I blame the Angels, right? And then I obviously blame the Red Sox, one of the richest teams in baseball, one of the richest teams in American sports, um, North American sports, uh, just deciding to trade. They're, they're a Hall of Fame player and the best player they might have ever had, like at least in the top five or so of best players they've literally ever had in their franchise history for nothing uh, to the Dodgers. Those t people I am mad at. I'm not mad at the Dodgers for being like, yeah, sure, we'll take your best player. Um, the media was choosing the Padres. Uh, they were choosing them to win. That is different than what I was complaining about. I know that reading and listening can be hard sometimes, but uh, what I was complaining about was the media bias. When you have Joe Davis, a Dodgers broadcaster, actively showing bias on nationally televised games in favor of the Dodgers. When you have um, the media calling that the Padres, the villains, after an incident in which our players had things thrown at them, after an incident in which Dave Roberts literally admitted he contrived a story to get their team motivated, and then for Ken Rosenthal to write an article that frankly was a little bit offensive and, and, and had some, some undertones I thought were really bad, kind of just highlighting every bad thing about Manny Machado and then well, look at Bryce Harper, look how good he is. As if Bryce Harper is not literally the player who has been ejected from the most major league games since 2015. So that was my issue. So that was not what my, my issue was whatsoever. It's not that the media was choosing the Padres. There's a lot of people choosing the Padres. I'm just saying that there was a lot of like narratives and things about this that were really frustrating and annoying about that series that I won't ever forget. But I know that's a little bit hard to to, it's hard to critically think sometimes. Um, next comment from at KTYU5 Jr. Honestly, the main guys on the Padres just need to grow up. You're out on the field clowning around with opposing fans is not a good look. Machado's attitude needs to change. That attitude has gotten him nowhere. Look at all the great teams and look at the leadership or the captain of those teams. Never have any of them acted the way Machado, Tatis, and Profar have. And even if the Pods win, no one outside of their fan base will give two bleeps about it. And if Pods fans, Community Ball Club are okay with that, then I say good luck to the entire organization. Um, I think this is a common kind of um, opinion by baseball fans. And basically the common opinion is that, you know, stop celebrating. Um, unwritten rules are great. And I think that you and your culture should just be eliminated from the game. I think that that's a common sort of refrain. Um, that's another thing. Speaking of narrative, people are acting like Tatis was immature because he went like this to the fans. I would like to remind everybody that Tatis, who, by the way, let's, if you want to be one of those people who wants to pretend that fans don't say anything to Profar the whole game and he started it and is taunting the fans as if it's not a two-way street, um, that's fine. What does that have to do with Tatis? He's in right field. They're throwing beer at him. So in response, he does that to the fans. I don't understand. And you can see media kind of like, you know, Sports Center tweets posting, you know, you know, here's how you are on one day. Life comes at you fast as if the Padres started it. Like, I have never been more disappointed in the fact that literally nobody was talking about all that stuff. Instead, it was how bad the Padres were, and thanks in large part to the Ken Rosenthal article because May Machado tossed the ball into a dugout, right? Into which, as we discussed, Dave Roberts later admitted that he contrived, right? And basically was hopeful that Ken Rosenthal would be a math piece for the Dodgers like he always is, or at least most often is. Um, so I don't believe in that. I don't think that there's this childish thing. I just, I don't understand this idea that like you have to act a certain way in baseball. I find it frankly extraordinarily offensive. Um, Mookie Betts has literally made diving catches against the Padres, incredible catches, and pumped himself up and all that stuff. Broussard Gratterall has absolutely lost his mind seeing his teammate make great catches. I think this idea of like proper behavior is in 
incredibly offensive and wrong, and it just speaks to a level of old-fashioned unwritten rule endorsement that I just frankly do not agree with and I think is poisonous and toxic to the rest of the game, and I think it's a pox on the game's ability to grow and reach out to more people, most people of which who watch baseball and are like, this looks like a prison, what's going on here? So this this stinks, right? Um I will say, though, Manny Machado does need to play better in the postseason. He hasn't been all that great. He was okay this postseason, but in totality, he's been struggling a little bit. Uh, moving on, though, uh, just some nice comments, though. Uh, from at Zemitram1779, thanks, Javier, for a great season. This was the first year listening to podcasts. We'll listen again next season. Next year will be the year. Hey, man, we still got some off-season stuff, though, so, so keep it tuned here. Um, I don't know. I imagine a lot of you are going to come back, especially when we get, like, acquisition news and whatnot, so I understand a little bit of a let me take a break for now and unwind, but uh, thank you so much, man. Uh, I appreciate it. Everyone who was a first-time listener this year, you are loved and appreciated very very much. Another positive comment from at Silas Robert Shaw, a frequent commenter, 8122. Geez, it was a good fun season. The offense not showing up was a problem all season, as Javi noted his concern many times. The team was very hot and cold, full of emotion. Teams like that can make a huge run, but when they go cold, they go really cold. It was sad to see, but man, it was a fun season. That's what I will hold on top next year to build upon. Thanks for all the coverage all season, Javi. And thank you, Robert, for the very kind comment. Yeah, um, I think that this is just, that's one of the reasons I predicted the Padres to lose was I was just like I just did not think that the Dodgers would lose again. I thought Yamamoto, Yamamoto would be great. I really thought that game five, uh, game four was like a real big like like red flag that they just didn't show up at all at Petco. And then you know just in general they showed up all year offensively. At some point you're gonna have a, a stretch where you don't. That's why. And I felt like that was a sign. So that's what happened there. But I agree. So many good moments, and that's why we will be doing an episode recapping and counting down top ten, top fifteen, maybe even top twenty uh, best moments of the Padres season. So that. That'll be a lot of fun, guys, for sure. But folks, before we continue doing this lovely return to form mailbag, I got to take a second to talk to you about our good friends over at FanDuel. Ladies and gentlemen, we love FanDuel very, very much. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. It's great. It's great fantastic guys because right now new customers can bet five dollars and get 150 in bonus bets if you win the FanDuel Sportsback app gives you everything you need to lit place live bets on the NFL all in one place so when you get a hunch in the middle of the game you can check out the latest stats if you play by play and whatever else you want same page where you place your bets just visit FanDuel.com to join today you get started again with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet that's FanDuel.com never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel an official sportsbook partner of the NFL And just like that, everybody, we are thriving and vibing into the final segment of this show. Possibly a longer one, so let's not waste any time. Folks, another comment from at RHAZ Machine 769. He says, Padres eliminated eliminated One Piece anime on hiatus until next year. Pain, sadness. Yeah, man, it's rough out here. But hey, us One Piece fans, we stay eating. And all of you fellow straw hats out there, don't complain. Don't, Don't lose hope. We still, we still got, the, I mean, we have been blessed with so much good. You know what I mean? It's still good out here. So stay, stay, stay golden. Um, moving on though. Next, next comment at rich J H nine, the Dodgers were crushed by injuries to their p- pitching staff more than any team in recent memory. Still, they finished ahead of the Padres by five games over 162 game season with a run differential of more than 60. That's the same run differential difference as the Mets and the Giants. In addition, the Dodgers beat the Padres in a best out of five series, shutting them out over the last 24 innings. Anything other than we got beat by the better team is the only reasonable response. Um, Again, I just want to give a shout out to the fact that nobody watched my video. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like nobody watched my video. And I also think that um, it's fair to bring up that you brought up the regular season. Well, in the regular season, the Padres had actually beaten uh, the Padres. I think it was, was it eight games to three? I'm forgetting exactly what it was, but they won the season series. And then on top of that, like you said, 24 scoreless innings. So I absolutely think that it's okay to be frustrated with the Padres. Um, but not as frustrated necessarily as this guy. JD's third on YouTube said, We choked in 2020, 22, and 24. We can't trash talk the Dodgers and call them chokers anymore. We talk a big game and showboat with the antics, but can't back it up on the field. Pathetic and embarrassing. Uh, first of all, I just don't understand why everybody's acting like these antics thing is like, I just don't get it. You're celebrating 
celebrating is different than being like Dylan Brooks in the NBA or like Patrick Beverly formerly of the NBA. Like there's a difference between just being amped, right? What what do you think? Antics? Teoscar Hernandez absolutely lost his mind when he hit a grand slam. So, so where's the enough? Stop talking about on-field antics. It's ridiculous to talk about that. Um, but I will say no. I will absolutely be on. Guys, we can't talk trash about the Dodgers anymore. Um, I've been talking trash about them for a while because they act like they run the league, right? Like they've been acting like that way for a while. Um, and I think that the 2020 championship, it counts, but it's just very like, it's just very easy to make fun of. Like, oh, so the one guys you did, the one time you guys didn't choke was 2020. Like, okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's very like, that's typical. And then they then choked three years in a row after that, or what was it? Three, three years in a row. Um, I do take issue with your comment saying we choked in 2020, 22, and 24. Everybody in general, I don't know about you guys, if, and I'm trying not to get on a soapbox here. We throw around the whole choke and fell apart, all that stuff, way too liberally. Um, I know people who said that the Mets choked two years ago. And I was like, y'all won 100 plus games. I need more than that of a choke. In 2020, the Padres, that was their coming out party. That was their first good season. And they lost to the better team, which was the Dodgers. That's not a choke. And also their pitching got hurt. So that was a big, big part of that. Their top two starters were hurt in that series. Um, Denelson Lamette and Mike Clevenger at the time. In 2022, uh, that's a little bit tough because I think the Phillies were a great team too. And also keep in mind that that Padres team won 89 games and Juan Soto, um, Brandon Drury, and Josh Bell, their trade deadline acquisition, Soto was good, but he wasn't actually great yet. You know what I mean? That was like a kind of an upstart Padres team. So I'm, I'm having trouble believing that choking is making the NLCS, even if you did have a bad moment. You did have a bad moment, right? You had the, the Josh Hader not being used moment from Bob Melvin. That was bad. Um, and then 24, that... I'm with you on. I'm not in this whole, like, the I guys, I know teams that choke. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Buffalo Bills losing three Super Bowls in a row. That's wild. The Los Angeles, uh, formerly San Diego Chargers, right? Believe me, that's a team that chokes. The James Harden, any team he's been on, believe me, that's a choke. Uh, the Golden State Warriors being up 3-1 in the NBA Finals, that's a choke. So I just think that we need to stop throwing this around so much. I will say that out of all those years, though, 24 is the one because I do think they were the better team than the Dodgers. I think they played all year as a better, more dangerous team top to bottom especially when it came to the postseason and in the second half I know the guy brought up the run differential but in the second half the Padres were the best team after their bullpen and all those acquisitions getting Musgrove back so to me 24 scoreless innings that is a little bit more of a choke that's why I compared them to the Houston Rockets of the NBA who infamously missed 27 straight three-pointers uh in their winner take all game so that's what I felt but in general guys stop throwing around choke so much um next comment though says props to the Padres dodged Forgotten says Dodger fan here. Props to the Padres organization for bringing together the Padres fan base and selling out that ballpark most nights. Props to AJ Peller for putting together one hell of a team this year. It made for a much funner season for not only the Padres fans, but also the Dodgers fans. I think a lot of Dodgers fans are like that where it's like this rivalry is great, guys. It's awesome. So thank you, sir. Um, moving on, though, to some actual like really interesting questions. I saved the spiciest for last. At mankid3894, do you think they will replace Profar by Tierso or Nellis or re-sign Profar? Um, I think that Tierso could be a bench player uh, next year. I think that's entirely possible. Um, but I think the, the priority for the Padres is probably to bring back Profar, um, unless they have something else in mind, unless they're saying we're bringing in Anthony Santander to play left field. I don't know why they would do that. That'd be weird. But you get my point. Maybe they move Tatis to center and put Santander in right field. I could see that being a possibility. Um, but I don't I don't see it being a one for one replacement. Um, and I do think that the Padres, he's just played so well for them. And I don't think that he's going to cost too much. I know it's scary, but I would remind everybody that there are a lot more data points that show that this wasn't crazy fluky of a season for Profar, um, especially compared to, say, a Cody Bellinger. I think he's getting a lot of comparisons to Bellinger. Cody Bellinger had the greatest discrepancy in weighted on base and expected weighted on base for, like, two years in a row or whatever. His hard hit rate was really down, all that stuff, and he just happened to have a great season. That's why everybody was out, out on him, right? And that's why he opted into his contract, because not testing free agency again, because he knows he wasn't that good this year, and teams kind of know that. Profar, not a big discrepancy, so I would be optimistic about that, and I'd love for them to re-sign him. Um, and I think that's a, a strong possibility as well. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Moving on though to the next question. This one coming from two 
of my longtime favorite folks. I saved y'all till the end because I know you're diehard Locked On Padres fans. I, there's something about the idea of someone being a diehard Locked On Padres fan. This is just killing me. But from Rama Murney, welcome back, Javi. Do you expect Blake Snell to come back to the Padres? How soon? Will there be extensions for Mike Schilt and Ruben Niebla? Should we extend Jackson Merrill or wait and see how he does next season? What free agents should we target? Whoa, boy. Holy lordy, 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 lordy. First of all, Robin Murray, I appreciate the enthusiasm. But those are a lot of questions. Uh, and a lot of questions that require more than just a mailbag episode, right? So we're going to save um, some of them. Uh, so, for example, uh, free agents, that's going to be episodes we talk about. We're going to be talking about free agency profiles throughout the offseason, um, you know, Every single one, kind of every major one, who they should target. And frankly, I'm still in the lab kind of figuring out my personal uh, opinions on who they should sign. Uh, when it comes to Mike Shelton and Ruben Niebla, I would love extensions for both of them. And I think that that is pretty possible. Uh, I do. And then should we extend Jackson Merrill or wait and see how he does next season? Um, I think it's more of a use the leverage you have right now. You have a lot of players under a lot of contract. When you have control over a player... I think they should take advantage of it, at least for now. But I wouldn't be surprised if they are interested in extending him. But also, when you say wait until next season, that's also a thing for me. And on top of the, the having advantage, and this is not a cheapskate team. That's why I give them a little bit of benefit of the doubt here. They have so many other contracts. Take advantage of the fact that you don't have to, that, you know, Merrill is not going to be an unrestricted free agent for a little bit. And also, yes, I do to, to a degree. I'm like, let's wait until what happens next season. Everybody would have extended Cronenworth for six years after 2020. You know what I mean? So, like, let's just wait a little bit, see how it goes, uh, because these things can change. Pitchers figure things out. He does have a super low walk rate, which we're going to talk about in the player review for him. But, uh, yes, yeah, so that should be a lot of fun, man. Uh, but thank you, as always, for the questions. And speaking of Blake Snell, yay, yay, Ong, my Australian homie, he said, thoughts on Snell returning. I think Blake Snell is, like, one of the most fun guys to talk about for this offseason. I'm really, really hopeful that... Um, that he can be uh, brought back to the Padres. I think there's interest there. And maybe I'm reading the, through the tea leaves too much. But when he posted that he sent them uh, a pizza. Because he used to do like a pizza party thing when he was with the Padres. And he still sent one to them when he visited. Uh, when he faced the Padres for the first time as a giant. Maybe I'm looking too much into it. It's possible. But he had such an awesome end of his season. Reunite with Ruben Niebla. Who's one of the people who got him to be uh, some of his best work. Um, in, in a while, I could see a four-year deal for Blake Snell. And now it is not without risk. And we're going to talk about that um, when we get to a Blake Snell kind of free agent profile piece. But um, I would, I, the reason why I am, I've tweeted about him a couple times too, is just, I like him. I think he's so much fun. I think his vibes are incredible. He's one of my favorite interviews, one of my favorite pitchers. It's because of the way he pitches where, man, that guy looks like, he looks like when he's off, he looks like me when I was sick the past few weeks. Like if I had tried to pitch while sick, where he's just like, ah, oh, like he's just like laboring. It feels he throws like a hundred pitches for three innings, and then he just wakes up and is the most invincible pitcher in all of baseball. And on Blake Snell, I think is a top ten pitcher. He's not a top ten pitcher overall because he's he's not always on and he has a, a huge ramp up as you saw this year with the Giants. But when he's on, I think he's a top ten pitcher. I, I genuinely do. I think the guy's incredible. So. I would love him back very, very much. Last question, though, comes from a new frequenter of this podcast, Aaron Fishman. Everybody go check out his book that he did. Um, it's a really fantastic book. Uh, I, I'm, I'm blanking a baseball guy. I'm blanking on it right now. Former. I actually interviewed him for my Baseball versus the World podcast. Um, but it is a fantastic book on, like, one of the early kind of – you know, uh, a baseball guy, uh, Chasing a Dream and Back is the name of the book that – uh, it's kind of like a, this journey, uh, one of the first journeys from Tony Barnett, um, who was one of the first players to kind of be that player that went to Japan first and then came back to Major League Baseball and eventually made a team. So really great book. Highly recommend it. But he asks, I'd love to hear your thoughts on where Robert Suarez can still improve if you believe that he can. Um, if you believe that he can. Uh, very typical question of Mr. Fishman because... Where, where did we get Robert Suarez from? He was pitching another league. He was international for a bit, so it tracks. Um, for Robert Suarez, I think more whiffs is what is needed. I think that it is a problem that he doesn't get as many strikeouts considering how hard he throws. Um, he can just be a little bit weak in that area. Um, and I do think he can improve because he's had a lot of whiffs in the past, right? This is a guy who... And he was also still very good this year. So my kind of take on him is he's a very good relief pitcher. But I would also be lying to you if I said it wouldn't shock me if he does have a big sort of 
not big, but a regression next year. So, like, you know, like I said, with the whiff rate and whatnot, I think he needs to improve some of his secondary pitches, get a little bit more of a chase on his fastball. That's what I think you need, a little bit more of a whiff rate there, especially more of a whiff rate on his sinker, and then I think we're in business. But considering the fact that his whiff rate on his changeup is 45.2%, which is excellent, but he doesn't use that as much as his fastball to put away pitchers, I think that the, the, the fastball needs a little bit more of an improvement for him to just be able to go at hitters a little bit more. He's still very good. Let me be clear, he was good in the postseason too. Um, as And there was a big panic about that, and he did deliver in the postseason. Um, so I think he can improve, um, but also don't be surprised if the lack of whiffs for someone who throws as hard as him. It's not like he's a young spring chicken either. Don't be surprised if we see a little bit of a stumble out of the gate next year. Uh, maybe just a little bit. But either way, I'm super optimistic, and I think that this Padres bullpen can still be very, very good um, heading into next season, so I'm excited about that. But everybody, with all that being said, that about does it for today's return of the Locked On Padres podcast. The only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. Tomorrow's episode, I believe we are going to do the player review for Fernando Tatis Jr. And then we're going to get some free agent profiles, but we're going to be doing a lot of player uh, reviews and all that stuff. And of course, we might get some news over the next week and a half. You know, winter meetings are going to be coming up before you know it. So keep it locked in, guys. It's, it's not going to be that long it's going to be a while until we get baseball back it's not going to be as long as you think for us to get news and things to talk about i think right including if big signings happen for other teams including if the padres make some big trades all that sort of stuff so keep it locked here everybody thank you everybody sorry for being gone for so long but until that next time and i promise it won't be an extended time stay safe and of course stay faithful my fire faithful homies take care